Now, we have obtained the, the output expansion path and where did we obtain? We obtain it on a graph where the axis represents the amount of input. What we can do? We can translate it into the other a different axis where we have Q amount of output given on X axis and the cost given on the Y axis. How can we obtain this? Look at this, at this particular point, we know how much is the output and we know how much is the cost. cost. Of course, we are taking W and R as fixed. Similarly, for all the level of Q, we can obtain the CQ and then we plot it here CQ versus Q and let me just draw roughly. I have drawn something like this. Okay? This is cost curve. This is called total, total cost, cost curve. curve. And what does the total cost curve give? The total cost, the minimum cost of producing Q. That is the important word. Not just the total cost of producing Q amount of output, yeah. but the minimum cost to produce the key amount of minimum total cost to produce Q amount of output. So never ever forget this minimum part, minimum is quite important, okay? fine. So, idea is when we get this curve, what we assume the firm has already minimized its cost and we are talking about only those particular combination of inputs which would minimize the cost of production. Is it clear? Okay. Now, in this curve, we can talk about, remember when we were talking about marginal productivity and average productivity, point, export in computer, good, okay, fine, this is fine, this is better. So, what we can obtain from this curve, we can obtain average total cost and marginal total cost. Remember again that here I am not making it a specific whether I am talking about average total cost in short run or in the long run. The same concept you can use and you can get average cost in the short run and average cost in the long run. Fine? I am not going to emphasize it again. How can we obtain the Average total cost, what is average total cost? Total cost by divided by amount of output. output. So, average total cost is C of Q divided by Q. Two things you should never min forget that first that price, prices, price of all inputs are fixed. Of course, when price would change, ATC would change and ATC is a function of Q. Second thing that we should remember, we are not talking about any combination that is being used to produce Q amount of output. We are talking about a specific combination, which combination that minimizes the cost of producing Q. So, cost minimizing combination, these two things you should not forget. And how can we obtain it on, it on this graph? This is quite simple. From the origin, we have done it. Let us say at this, this particular Q naught label, we are interested in calculating Q naught, uh, uh, average total cost. What we will do? We will get the slope of the line from origin. Huh. So, we will get the total cost, and this is the total cost, okay? and we will divide it by this amount should be divided by this Q naught and if we do that what we get? Slope of the line will give this average total cost. Similarly, what we have here is 
marginal cost and what is marginal cost it is rate of change of total cost with respect to q one definition another if we do not want to use calculus what we have to say that Okay. So, if we change the quantity by small amount and we see observe the change in the total cost. So, change in the total cost divided by the change in quantity is given as the marginal cost, but more accurate is to take this small change to 0 and in that case these, these two become equivalent. Fine. Is this clear? Now, one thing I would like to emphasize that total cost can be divided into two parts. One is fixed cost, another is variable cost. And what is the difference? Fixed cost does not change with the amount of output and variable cost do variable cost does change with the change in amount of output. So, this is a function of q while this is not a function of q. Now, when I divide total cost into two parts of course, I am talking about short run because by definition in long run we can change everything. Okay, it is a theoretical concept, we can change everything. So, in that case there is not going to be any fixed cost. So, when I divide it into two part of course, I am talking about short run. Again one can talk about fixed cost in two different way, fixed cost that is sunk cost and that is not sunk cost. this part, this part is called quasi fixed cost also. Let me talk about it little bit. Which one? Like, uh, if we purchase a machinery and after one year I can sell it at 70 percent of its price. So, sunk cost was 30 percent and 70 percent was a quasi sunk cost. And Not so quasi sunk cost. See, let me let me come back to your question, I will come to that. Okay. I think you have asked this question earlier, something similar. Mm -hmm. So, let me say here, what do we mean by sunk cost? A cost that cannot be recovered, okay. cost that cannot be recovered, that is sunk cost. Let us say, I want to start producing some item something from in this in this particular room and to do that I also felt like painting this room. Okay. And but after 6 months I decided you know I decided not to because of some reason I decided not to produce this particular good at this particular place. So, I do not think I would be able to recover the cost of this painting by selling it and all. Okay. So, this is sunk cost, this is gone, this is not recoverable, but let us say someone comes, he comes and he says okay, I like this particular color, color and he, he, he will be willing to pay something extra. Let us say that the painting cost you 500 rupees. And because of this particular painting, you get 200 rupees extra for this particular room. Then your sunk cost is only 300 rupees because this is you are not able to recover, but not whole 500 rupees. In other word, let us say when Microsoft, Microsoft you know every, every few years they come up with a new operating system and when they invest huge amount of money to come up with the next operating system. So, these days they are thinking about coming up with 
Windows 8. So all the money that they have spent, forget about the patent for that if they have, they have, they got some patents because patent they can sell and they can get some money. But all the costs that they have incurred and are not, they are not able to translate the output of, you know, the, the output of that effort into some kind of patent. Though the cost incurred for those efforts are gone. These, this particular company is ne will never be able to recover that the costs. So, those would be the sunk cost. But if they have spent 10,000 rupees on something and they got a patent for it and if that patent is sellable, then that is not a sunk cost. The output of that effort can be sold in the market even if they decide not to produce window 8. But let us say in order to produce window 8, they developed some prototype that they cannot sell in the market, nobody would buy it. So, cost of that, cost of producing that out, that particular kind of output would be sunk cost because that is not recoverable from the market, fine. So, why I am saying part of fixed cost is not sunk cost because something is gone, but uh, another kind of fixed cost is that you incur only if you produce some output. If you do not produce, you do not incur. So, research cost is kind of sunk cost in the production of window 8. But let us say after spending quite some time, they figure out that it is not worth releasing the next operating system. They would not incur cost on the production of new CDs for the window 8. But let us say if they decide to go for production of CDs for window 8, they need to hire a production in charge, okay. That production in charge does not matter whether the Microsoft produces 100 units, 50 units and a lakh unit. They would need to hire some accountants, they would need to hire probably a sales person, again it would again change with the number, but not in the continuous manner, okay. So, here we can say the cost of accountant and cost of production in charge is quasi fixed cost. Why? Because company incurs only if it decides to produce positive amount of output, fine. But the research cost is sunk cost, it was fixed cost they incurred even if they did not produce anything. So, that is why I am dis differentiating between these two that a fixed cost that is sunk and fixed cost that is not sunk and also this is quasi fixed cost, fine. Now, when we talk about opportunity cost, we economist, we always consider whenever we are talking about cost, it is always opportunity cost that we talk about. Like for example, we have been talking about this. R k, R k plus W l, this is the cost we are talking about, this is the cost we are minimizing. So, this R is basically the opportunity cost of using one unit of capital per unit of time, fine. This W is opportunity cost of using one unit of labor per unit of time. So, these are the opportunity cost. In economics, we are always worried about opportunity cost. We always talk about opportunity cost. Now, you can say this is also accounting cost. So, in that this case, accounting cost and opportunity cost are the same. In this case, it is exactly same. In this case, it depends, you know, sometime they account for depreciation or they may not account for depreciation. So, when we are talking about economic cost, we will account for depreciation and everything. You understand? So, here why we are saying this is the opportunity cost? Because if you do not hire one unit of capital, you will have our unit of money left in the company's kitty. So, that is the, op that is the best use of that, you know, that is the, the value of the best use would be our it can be used somewhere else. So, that is why it is the opportunity cost, okay. So, these two are different, fine. Okay. Now, if you pay attention to this, we can define 
average variable cost or we define the average cost and average cost was T c divided by Q. So, we can bring it here and what we get is we divide it into two components and this component is average fixed cost and this component is average variable cost fine. Just I am not saying that average variable cost is fixed, but there is a possibility that average variable cost is fixed, it would not change. So, do not get confused, let us look at it first one by one. Fixed cost, if we write here fixed cost versus Q, what do we mean? That it is not changing with the output, fine. Var how about variable cost? One thing we are certain about that if we do not produce any output, it is 0 and it can go any, it can go any way, we do not know, okay? fine. We will, we will see an example shortly. Okay. Now, when we draw average fixed cost with respect to Q, how would it look like? It decreases and asymptotically it reaches to 0. How about this? It depends, it depends, it depends, but there is a possibility that average variable cost is fixed. So, name in name you have variable, but what you get is fixed. I am not saying it is true, sometime you have, you know, you may have, you may have like this, okay. So, it does, it, it match, it depends on the variable cost, but do not get confused when someone says that average variable cost is fixed, because it is possible, fine.